we have guaranteed that our project is strictly following the COVID-19 safety regulations. Hello, my name is Christopher Duque, and this is our PID temperature control system for our robotic arm shooter. So how it works is we use an Arduino Uno board, and then during that, we connected an LCD and a rotary encoder and a Maxwell 6675 and a MOSFET BGT to regulate the temperature. So to begin, we used the Maxwell 6675 with a K-type thermocouple to sense the hot end temperature. So when the, the hot end is turned on and starts heating up, it will perfectly sense the temperature. And to go on, if we set a temperature like high, the MOSFET and the BGT will regulate the temperature so it just stays within the range of our desired output. Furthermore, as we can see here, we could use the rotary encoder to manipulate the temperature as this, to set it like at whatever temperature we desire, lowering it or increasing it, and also change the PID constants. So right now we're gonna show you a demonstration of it. So this is our example right here, the PID temperature control system. We put it at 66 and it's keeping it around 70.8. And here we have the Arduino code. So we have the MAC6675 module Arduino, the I2C LCD modules, and the liquid crystal, which we need, the libraries we need for this code to work. So here we have the temperature set at zero because we're changing the temperature within the actual breadboard as we've shown before. And we just have the also rotary encoder code and the BJT code. So that's about it. This is our PID temperature control system for our robotic arm extruder. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Hello everyone, my name is Gustavo Ramirez and I'm going to be talking to you guys about the peripheral hardware controller. This aspect of the peripheral hardware controller is the DC motor portion of it. Here we have the L298 motor driver, which is going to be connected to our, our um, DC motor, the Arduino, and we have a power supply that's for 24 volts. We use a step down to make it go down to 12 volts, which is then connected to our circuit. Here we have our three buttons. This dictates the direction of the DC motor. The, this stops it, and this makes it go forward. Uh, so this would be left, and this would be right. And then this would dictate the speed of it in which it turns. Now, uh, we also have an LCD display that shows the speed of the, of the DC motor so we can control it uh, accordingly. Having said that, I'm gonna go ahead and try out the DC motor. Okay, so if we go ahead and start it, this is the slow set setup on it. We don't need a lot of speed on it because it's gonna be controlling a spool that feeds the resin into our extruder. So we'll go ahead and turn the knob right here. You can see it speed up. Now the speed up is, uh, is not significant but we don't, again, we don't need that much power going to the spool. Now, the reason why we're using this DC motor instead of this one is because it's not mounting on, it's not mounted onto the robotic arm as of yet. However, this is what's gonna be turning, is the DC motor. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, in this segment of the video, we're gonna be discussing the extruder fans. Now this is a, an important aspect of the extruder because it keeps the components from overheating and functioning properly. Uh, for this, we created a switch that toggles it on and off, uh, so, somewhat like a master switch for the extruders. Okay, so when we turn it on, an LED indicates that it's on and the fans turn on. Now this is a simple circuit um, and there's gonna be several more like this, one for the extruder, one for the temperature, one for the fans, and one for the DC motor. Thank you for watching.